powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good Tuesday afternoon, everyone. I'm Victoria Hill in for Samantha Sullivan. Well, we begin with some feel-good news today. The Grizzlies are going dancing, and Grizz fans sent the team off in style this morning. The Montana men's basketball team de departed this morning from the Adams Center just after 10 o'clock. Students and fans were encouraged to meet the team in front of the Adams Center as they gathered around the bus. The bus traveled downtown out to the airport where Grizz fans cheered them on. Montana won the Big Sky Conference Tournament Saturday to earn a trip to the NCAA Tournament for the 12th time in school history and second season in a row. They will play five-seed Michigan this Thursday at 7.20 p.m. The game will broadcast nationally on TNT. Grizzlies have won 52 games over the past two seasons, making it the best two-year stretch in school history. And the ladies of Montana Western's basketball team are heading to the NAIA National Championship game tonight. The Bulldogs outscored the number one Freed Hardman Lions to win 78-71 to in overtime Monday and advance to the championship game. They play Oklahoma City tonight in Billings at 7 o'clock, and the game will air live on ESPN3. Three. Well, some more good news. We welcome spring tomorrow. And at Standing By in the Weather Center, well, spring is exciting for many people. Uh, it's not so good for other parts of can, the can U.S. Get, right now. You get all this good news. And then here, <laughs> here comes Ed the, the Eeyore so. with all my bad news. Let's go ahead and take a look. Because while we do have the team traveling to be able to be in the tournament, the Grizz will be playing in Des Moines. And we still have lots of flooding through the central and southern plains all the way down as we follow the Mississippi into the Mississippi Delta and that looks to be a problem. So on the east side of the red line, we're talking about flooding on the west side of the line, especially as we move from Montana all the way to the panhandle of uh, Texas. We're looking at some areas with drought, especially in areas of northern New Mexico. Right now, Montana doesn't look too bad, but a lot of what will come will depend on spring snow and rain. We'll talk more about that with the forecast coming up in a few minutes. Thank you so much, Ed. Bond for the man accused of fatally shooting one person and wounding three others, including a Montana Highway Patrol trooper, is set at $2 million. Jonathan Birch made his first court appearance Monday afternoon. He faces one count of murder for the death of Shelley Hayes and three counts of attempted murder in the shootings of Trooper Wade Palmer, Casey Blanchard, and his mother, Julie Blanchard. Law enforcement jammed the Missoula County Courthouse to show their support for their injured colleague, the 28-year-old suspect from our lead was arrested without incident following last week's shooting spree. Following a shots fired call this past Thursday, law enforcement arrived on scene to find Julie and Casey Blanchard shot but conscious and another victim, Shelly Hayes, had also been shot and was already dead. Birch fled the scene and eventually made his way outside of the Evro Bar, where court documents say he shot Trooper Palmer. A special response team in an armored vehicle made contact with Birch and he surrendered. They made sure Trooper Palmer handcuffs were used when taking Birch into custody. In Sydney, an investigation is underway after a three-month-old girl was found dead. The Sydney Herald reports police believe the death occurred because of a domestic situation with drugs. Officers arrived at a home Saturday to find a 30-year-old woman with an unresponsive infant. The baby died. Police say the woman's brother was also found with knife wounds. Police believe he was in the same room where the infant was found. The woman was flown to Billings and is in intensive care. More information has surfaced surrounding a white supremacist group and its ties to a former Montana State Army trainee. Earlier this month, the U.S. Army began investigating the conduct of Jay Harrison, a former MSU cadet. We're learning Harrison put up posters on campus in November linked to a white supremacist group called Identity Europa. Harrison is accused of making racist posts on social media, including anti-Semitic comments. It is concerning. It's concerning primarily because there appear to be Nazis in Bozeman. Uh, and generally, if there's one Nazi someplace, there's probably going to be others. Leaders at Montana State University are responding, saying they reject hateful statements from supremacist groups. When MTN asked Harrison for comment, he declined.
And meanwhile, a majority of State Public Service Commission threw its support behind a controversial bill designed to help Northwestern Energy buy an additional part of Coal Strip 4 power plant. That vote went against the recommendation of PSC staff, which said the bill undermines fundamental principles of utility regulation. MTN's Mike Dennison has more. Senate Bill 331 says if Northwestern Energy buys an additional 150 megawatts of the coal strip plant, it gets to pass on millions of dollars in plant-related costs to ratepayers without PSC review. On Monday, the PSC, which regulates utilities, voted 3-1 to one to support the bill. Commission Chairman Brad Johnson of East Helena said Montana customers of Northwestern will need that power from the coal strip plant in the future. He said he doesn't want to risk having the plant closed prematurely because of anti-coal political forces and that Senate Bill 331's guarantees for the company will help prevent that from happening. To leave that unit uh, subject to those forces and that kind of premature closure poses a much greater risk to the ratepayers than does uh, uh, the acquisition by Northwestern of this additional 150 megawatts. Commissioners Bob Lake of Hamilton and Randy Pinocchi of Sun River also voted to support the bill. But Commissioner Roger Koopman of Bozeman voted to oppose it and said supporting it is a huge mistake. He said the bill allows Northwestern to charge ratepayers for certain costs of coal strip 4 even if it's closed early and therefore it could encourage that early closure. Koopman also said it sets a terrible precedent by taking away the PSC's basic ability to review utility costs before they're put into electric customer rates. We believe in this bill, and we don't believe in the Public Service Commission, and the uh, legislature might as well go to work on creating something new for their liking, because this bill is a denial of what we are here to do. While PSC staff recommended opposition to the bill, it did say Monday that the bill's sponsor, Senator Tom Richmond of Billings, may offer some amendments that could alter some of its objectionable portions. Senate Bill 331 has its first hearing on Tuesday before the Senate Energy Committee. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Northwestern has said it's negotiating to buy this additional portion of power from another coal strip co-owner for only $1 because that owner wants to get out of coal-fired power.